Okay, just a few more things, just a few, uh, I guess, laws about uh, vectors um, that always hold. Okay, so let's just talk about that. Okay, um, if you add together two vectors A and B, that is always the same as adding um, them in the opposite order. Okay, so A plus B is always equal to B plus A. In other words, if you are A and B, doesn't matter which order you do it in, okay? So the resultant vector of that is A plus B, but if you do it as B first plus A, you'll get the same thing. So B is down here, A is up here. It doesn't make a difference which order you do it in. So that's the commutative property of that. Um, similarly, it doesn't matter which order. So if you've got A plus B, it doesn't matter which order of brackets you do. So um, doesn't matter, you could add B plus C together first. Um, it doesn't matter which order you add them together. Any adding with vectors, whatever order you do it in, does not matter. So those two properties hold. Um, if you add the zero vector to any vector, what do you think will happen if you've got A, got vector A, and you add zero to it, what is it equal? Just A, okay? So that does not change it at all. Um, what happens if you add A to negative A? Let's have a think about what will happen. If you've got A and you add negative A, remember negative A, I'll just change color. Negative A is just the exact opposite of A, so you'll get negative A. So if you add those two together, what happens? You get the zero vector. Okay, so um, adding it to its uh, negative always gets zero. It just might make sense. Um, also, if you've got some scalar quantity k or something like that, where k is just a number, and you've got two vectors a and b, and you're adding them together, um, it's just like in algebra where you can expand this this guy out. Okay, so some number k in front of there um, will be equal to k times a plus k times b, just like in algebra. Um, and so that's called a distributive property there. And we talked about it before, that if a is parallel, we can write it like that, if a is parallel to b, like that, um, then we must be able to write a as some uh, multiple of b. And so that's just for some, some um, k in R. Um, and so basically they're all the vector laws. Um, you'll need to be able to rely on those to be able to use um, those um, when we're doing proofs later on. Um, that's basically all of it. Just want to quickly also do, um, do something quick. Um, we'll sort of mainly be talking about uh, two dimensions so far. Um, but we can also do three dimensions. So um, this is in the X direction. This is in the Y direction. What happens if we come out of the page and come into a, you know, a third dimension? So you've got your X, you've got your Y. What happens if we bring it out into a Z? And so, so far we've been talking about 2D vectors and we write them as a column vector, say 1, 3, like that. You might write A have been equal to that. If we've got three dimensions, all we do is extend that. So we might have some vector b, which is equal to, it goes 2 in the x direction, negative 3 in the y direction, and 1 in the z direction. So we can just extend that property into the three in the third dimension. And so they're a little bit harder to draw on paper, a little bit, a bit funny. Um, let me try and draw b on this diagram here. So it goes 2 in this direction, so I'll just make that two. So it comes out two in this direction. It goes negative three in the y direction, so somewhere down here to there, and it comes one out, I'll do one in the z direction. So it's actually comes out to sort of, oh no, I've sort of screwed it up. It goes there, and but then sort of back sort of that way. Oh, I've really screwed it up. Um, but anyway, um, it's hard to draw in three dimensions. It goes that way, that way, and then that way, so it ends up down there, so uh, something like that. Anyway, that's all I have for this video.